Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. I wanted to continue with the topic of the three most important EVs that GM can build uh, in the upcoming years. In the last video I talked about the Malibu EV and why I think just porting over the components from the Bolt EV into something like the Malibu EV would make a very compelling electric vehicle, especially if the battery size were upped a little bit. Just the sedan format, I think, is what would drive that. Now, the second most important EV that I think GM could build right now, again, using the Bolt EV drivetrain and components, would be an Equinox EV. The reason I say that is, you know, a lot of people, their issue with the Bolt EV is its size. And people are looking more for what would be a uh, compact SUV. Now, knowing what we know about how the Bolt EV's powertrain and chassis and battery interact with cabin size, well, what you would end up with is even though the Equinox is something of a compact SUV, you would actually have the capacity in the interior space probably more similar to a midsize SUV. And even though it is a larger vehicle, it is very oddly efficient. An example of this is one of my friends actually traded in her previous generation Chevy Cruze for an Equinox because the fuel efficiency was virtually identical and she would get a larger format vehicle for the same fuel economy. If that also holds true for an electric vehicle chassis, even again, like I said, I think these are larger vehicles, so they would need a slightly larger battery size than what's currently in the Bolt EV. A vehicle like the Equinox would probably want a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack at a minimum, but you're still looking at a vehicle with that battery pack that could go over 220 to 230 miles on an EPA rated charge. And I think it's a very compelling vehicle, even as it is in its internal combustion format. It's a vehicle that I know a lot of people really like. Uh, they like the styling, they like the interior, and basically giving it a Bolt EV makeover would create a very compelling platform that I think GM could leverage for quite a lot of sales. I think it would win a lot of people over. I didn't mention this with the Malibu EV, but I do think now that GM is focusing on more SUVs and crossover utility vehicles, I do think that they need to consider bringing in a all-wheel drive EV platform. Now this does add cost, it does add complexity, all-wheel drive on an EV platform, if done incorrectly, could result in severe efficiency penalties. The thing that I think Tesla does well with their all-wheel drive EV platform is they uh, pair permanent magnet motors with induction motors. And one of the big benefits of an induction motor is you can uh, put it to sleep while you're driving, essentially so that there's no efficiency loss whatsoever. You get to power down components. Now, it, it could be that GM engineers have some nifty ways of dealing with that with a permanent magnet motor, but if they don't, it's good to know that GM also has experience with the induction motors. And I really don't think that they need to do anything much more advanced than what they had in the EV1 or the S10 EV where these were 85 to 100 kilowatt induction motors as a supplement to a primary permanent magnet drive motor, these would give both a all-wheel drive option while not a, having too negative of an impact on fuel economy. The Equinox EV would be a perfect candidate for it. I mean, I think personally the Bolt EV would also be a perfect candidate for it, uh, maybe, like I said, that 85 kilowatt uh, induction motor that they had in the S10 EV, mounting it up on a rear drive axle in the Bolt EV with an independent rear suspension, 
you could easily ask another $5,000 on the price of the Bolt EV for something like that. Now, there might be some other sacrifices, and it might be at that point worth increasing the battery's power density. So there would be higher costs when it comes to the actual battery, but I think those trade-offs would be worth it. It would mean you'd have a higher discharge rate and a higher charging rate. Uh, so I think those would more than compensate for the added cost. So I think that is something that GM should probably consider across the board. They have an EV platform that they can basically just tack on the SS badge to, and that's really their performance all-wheel drive versions of pretty much any EV that they have. And like I said, I don't think they need to go overboard with it. The Bolt EV is already 200 horsepower. That would be adequate for an Equinox EV, though I think the Equinox EV would probably want a little bit more power. But either way, adding another, you know, 80 to 100 kilowatts on top of that, you're not really going overboard. You're not looking for, you know, sub four second zero to 60 times or anything like that. But people do want competent, quick vehicles. And I think that would accomplish that goal for a relatively low cost. Either way, I think it's mostly that format of the Equinox where you're in a slightly bigger vehicle, you're sitting a little bit higher up off the ground. Uh, the styling is something a lot of people really like. And yeah, you'd add a huge amount of uh, interior cabin room. And, and I think it's something that GM should pursue very, very actively. I think it's a vehicle that would sell well. And I don't think that GM needs to only focus on luxury EV platforms, which unfortunately it sounds like what they might be planning to do. I say unfortunately because we already have so many luxury EV platforms. It would just be nice to have some average costed, long range, you know, low compromise electric vehicles for people to choose from in a variety in shapes and sizes. And that's why I think uh, the second most important EV platform that GM could develop and release in the near future would be an Equinox EV. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Do you like the Equinox? Do you think it would be a good candidate for a, I'll just call it a Bolt EV makeover? Uh, and like I said, these are, these are platforms that can share these components. It brings the costs down a lot for GM to be able to just use the same components across multiple vehicles. So if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Uh, stay tuned for the uh, part three of the three most important EVs I think GM could build and provide at this point. And uh, thank you for watching.